It was certainly embraced by the visionary Louis Fred Kennedy, and he led the establishment of the company superannuation fund, medical scheme, share ownership, and group life that were certainly major achievements and revolutionary innovations at that time, and set a benchmark for the country that has not really been emulated. Highlights of this in the choices of the roads to be taken include invoking self-determination or clinging to dependency, pursuing private initiative or demand public underwriting, prioritize human capital development or condemn labor to low-skilled tasks, engage the small man or indulge the privileged. Grasp opportunities quickly and decisively or react sluggishly and half-heartedly to crises. Diversify into new positions or over-invest in old positions. Use geography strategically or disregard geography. Sounds familiar. It's going through more than one decade. period I call alignment, 1945 to 62. The post-World War II world was about to change, and with it came an opportunity for Britain to push its colonies off their balance sheets towards independence. The replacement of the gold standard enabled some relaxing of controls in world monetary and fiscal governance. This must have been seen as a major relief for heavily indebted nations as a result of their war borrowings. The United States was to emerge as a real superpower and divided the balance of power decisively and effectively. The significance of these events would be mentioned by Dudley Thompson and Edward Siaga, and I will quote them later. The failure of the League of Nations to sanction Italy for the use of deadly mustard gas, gas on Ethiopians was a major mistake as it allowed the idea of might being right to spread rapidly. The arms race with more deadly weapons of mass destruction therefore gained legitimacy. Jamaica gained nothing significant from this rapid military expansion. The only concessions were the reinstatement of sugar and banana preferences in British markets, thus perpetuating the low value added local retention and the profit exportation associated with extractive industries. The company formed its own labor union, which it eventually ceded to Alexander Bustamante. <laughs> but the union of friendship already alluded to would lead to the principles espoused in the Joint Industrial Council that paved a way eventually to make port expansion one of the truly successful public and private investments. The company moved strategically to establish a subsidiary in Montreal, Canada in 1951 and in Rotterdam in 1958. These would prove, provide important access to overseas credit and preferential pricing as they were exporters to Jamaica. Their establishment also opened the company's senses to the prospects and viability of trade from outside Jamaica directly to external markets without having to come here. It put the birth of a brand into real perspective. By doing this, Grace Kennedy began to pay attention to international market opportunities. At the same time, Jamaica embraced the bauxite mining industry and the construction associated with this created jobs and disposable income in rural areas. To some extent, it changed the pattern of rural development and resulted in growth in Manchester, Clarendon, and St. Anne. 
Grace Kennedy's deepening of its rural distribution delivery network paid handsome dividends as the largest part of the market was not required to come to Kingston for supplies. I think that this caught many competitors flat-footed and certainly government distribution kept the come to Kingston mentality, especially for bulk commodities. Wholesalers in rural townships develop their own customer routes, systems of credit to small shops, and this in turn helped to stimulate that rural growth. The company also modified its recruitment of some professionals, but continued to use the apprenticeship model, especially in the food division. It should be noted that the University College of the West Indies was more focused on medicine, arts and social sciences, and professionals in business areas were being more widely trained overseas. Possibly emboldened by the apparent early windfall from the bauxite mining, Jamaica saw a profitable future and would rather not endanger or share this with the small islands and decided to leave the West Indies Federation and go it alone. Perhaps similar sentiments were shared by Trinidad and Tobago and their oil resources that were being developed rapidly. It therefore closed an era with thoughts of independence and plans for prosperity. It was a happy time for the country and the company. Jamaica was to be Jamaican at last. But all was not to be that simple. In the Legislative Council, Edward Siaga warned, and I quote, Mr. President, Independence has come upon this country in a rush. We are now going forward into independence and there are still vast areas of the country that do not quite know what independence means or what it should mean. To them it is a word and it is a word that has been connoted with freedom. But what else does it mean? For it must mean more than this. There are still sections of the country that fear the word independence. They fear it because to them the word freedom does not mean the free power to create and to build, but freedom to destroy." End of quote. Dudley Thompson in the Senate in the same year prior to independence commented on a presentation that was being done on explaining the IMF and the World Bank with respect to the easy access to loans. And Dudley Thompson remarked, and I quote, I accept my honorable and learned friend's statement that there is great merit in being able to borrow millions of pounds. But we know from history that where there are facilities to borrow, we have a duty to repay. End of quotation. So we come right on the eve of independence to some more choices in which roads to take. Invoke self-determination or cling to dependency. Pursue private initiative or demand public underwriting. Prioritize human capital development or condemn labor to low-skilled tasks. Engage a small man or indulge the privileged. Grasp opportunities quickly and decisively, or react sluggishly and half-heartedly to crises. Diversify into new positions or overinvest in old positions. Use geography strategically or disregard geography. Require accurate information or be guided by sentiment. Defend integrity or bow to corruption. Vigilantly protect long-term interests or always gratify short-term wants. Seems to be a very recurring decimal. The next period goes from 1963 onwards. Independence did not bring much change in terms of the economic programs of the new nation. 
private ownership of the means of production was left to the old ways of loans rather than equity. Bailouts in agriculture continued. The rural road access for transporting goods were poor, almost with an attitude that should have been very different to that of Sir Edward Denham, but was not. The vast majority of the rural peasantry were ignored, and migration to the cities, especially Kingston, quickly overwhelmed the social infrastructure. 